<laughs> Please turn your cell phones off. Thank you very much. Our vision statement for our Pasco County School Board meeting, Tuesday, September 10th, is, and always is, that all of our students achieve success in college, career, and life. Our thought for the evening will be uh, presented by board member Megan Harding. Okay. Um, I saw this the other day and it reminded me of our amazing um, Pasco teachers and staff. So it says, when I'm feeling the stress of daily life, I need to remember that each day I get more hugs than the average therapist, turn more frowns into smiles than the average dentist, watch more brains process information than the average neurologist, and give more attagirls and attaboys than the average coach in a year. And then we do this every day because we were born to be teachers. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, as for roll call, uh, please make note that all board members are present. Um, I would like to ask for a moment of silence, and perhaps you would like to reflect upon the uh, victims of the recent uh, Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas and elsewhere. All right, thank you. Uh, approval of minutes from the regular meeting of August 20th, 2019. Um, assuming everyone read the minutes, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion made by Board Member Armstrong and seconded by Board Member Bodwin. Motion approved. There are no public hearings this evening uh, and no pre special presentations this evening. So we're going to move straight into public comment on agenda items. And I have one green card. And tonight we have Paul Meeker as our um, attorney. And he's going to open that up for us. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, at this time, uh, we'll have uh, uh, public comment for uh, those members that uh, items on the agenda. Um, when, you, when your name is called, come up to the, uh, the podium, if you would. Give us your name and address. Uh, you'll have three minutes to speak. Uh, at the uh, end of that three minutes, I'll probably give you about a 10-second warning to let you know that the uh, uh, that your time will be up. Um, thank you. We have the timer now. You don't even we, I know. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Meeker. Okay, our uh, speaker on the agenda, we have one. It's Terry Kempel. My name is Terry Kempel. I live at 2312 Cherry Ridge Lane, Brandon, Florida. And I want to speak with you just briefly about the Gates grant that you all are considering. Um, we went through a Gates grant in Hillsborough County. It cost the district over $100 million. Uh, we had to build an infrastructure to support a grant that the Gates said they were going to support with $10 million a year for 10 years, and we had to put up $10 million a year for 10 years as well. So we built the infrastructure, and after about seven years, maybe it was eight years, the Gates decided that they wanted to pull out. So we had to support both sides of the infrastructure while the grant was wound down. So the reason I'm up here is just that you all, obviously some of you are nodding your head, so you're familiar with that. I would encourage you to be very careful in uh, any kind of exit clauses that you have in there. So if you're building any infrastructure for that grant, uh, based on the anticipation that the gates are going to be participating for some particular lim li uh, period of time, make sure that there's an out clause, that if they get out early, they still have to pay you the money. Uh, Hillsborough County is still trying to recover from the damage that was done. Thank you. Um, United School Employees of Pasco, Mr. John Peace. Superintendent Browning, Attorney Meeker, Chair Crumley, Honorable School Board Members and District Staff. After much thought and several formal and informal conversations with both senior 
district staff and employees, it has been determined that this president and this organization cannot and will not support the concept of rewarding all employees by negatively impacting the time and workload of a significant portion of the bargaining unit. Our board and staff is standing behind me in support of this decision. This organization, as the bargaining agent for all employees of this district, represents every employee and must consider the pros and cons of each when deciding on working conditions and salary adjustments. This president stated emphatically that no consideration would be given to any plan that eliminates teachers planning time. It has never been advocated by this organization to selectively divide the workforce into segmented populations which advancing either of the alternative schedules would effectively do. It is not our desire to pit classroom versus non-classroom teachers, secondary against elementary teachers, or teachers against SRP. Union, by its very definition, is a coming together, not a tearing apart. We are collectively standing with those who would bear the brunt of the burden, which would be shared by all. As an organization that looks out for employees, we will stand with their decision to not support making this proposed change, just as we would stand by the elementary teachers or SRP if the situation were reversed. It is and has been our goal to bring about a response that is fair and equitable to every employee when bargaining salary and workload. USCP and this president has taken a lot of grief for not coming out against all these plans initially. But as the bargaining agent, take very seriously the potential availability of some $15 million to put towards employee salaries. However, the only way this funding becomes available is through the diminishment of 250 teachers, 250 bargaining unit members, your employees. No matter how you explain it, this will result in a major increase of time and work for others. We've had numerous conversations and meetings with, with employees across the spectrum to see if any schedule addition would be feasible. We've explored every option discussed and had conversations and emails with senior district staff to see if preliminary concerns could and would be addressed should some, of, some sort of agreement be reached. One of the major concerns shared with us is the creep that is already settling into school schedules. District staff was unwilling to commit to the elimination of all skinny, homeroom, recovery, or remediation periods when asked by USEP. In many or most of our secondary schools, these periods have been added to the student contact time and add to the length of the student day. Many schools are adding extra duties to what the teacher is being asked to do during these periods. In most high schools and many of the middle schools, class rosters are now pushing up towards 160 to 175 students, well above what the law intended as best practices in those classrooms. Many teachers commented on the impossible task it would be to add 30 to 35 more students to the load they already have. This also would lend to teachers adding more outside the contract time to their day to complete tasks such as testing, grading, and planning for instruction. An overwhelming majority of individuals surveyed by USEP elected to keep working conditions status quo while understanding that by doing so would render salary adjustments of 8 to 12 percent unavailable. An equally resounding number voiced opposition over either of the two proposed alternative plans as discussed. It is for these reasons, as, as well as several additional concerns, that USEP, as the bargaining agent for all employees of this district, 
will not support the superintendent's original proposal of six of six, nor will we support either of the alternative schedules as proposed. There may be a plan that we have not yet discovered that would be fair and equitable to all employees, and we would certainly be willing to discuss those ideas. However, the existing plans are divisive. It is bad enough that our legislators have de devised bonus schemes that have caused division amongst our teachers. Our own superintendent spoke out against those plans. So it is somewhat confusing to talk now would be of anything similar. Division causes undue stress and distrust. This district and this board should want no part of any divisive plan to do the same. Let me clarify a misstatement from a recent newspaper article. USEP is not refusing to come to the table. We are not the ones promoting this schedule change, and the district negotiating team has not brought forth any sort of proposal to even have a discussion on. We definitely are not standing in the way. What we have done is our due diligence. We've looked at all the options, spoken to numerous employees at numerous work sites, and are ready to make this decision. Our governor has gone on record as saying he wants to do more for teachers. So why don't we initiate hard conversations starting with our own local legislators to get the categorical strings removed from the best and brightest bonus plan and utilize the seven to nine million dollars this would make available for improving all employee salaries here in Pasco. Also, I have advocated for over a year for a ballot initiative, a referendum. We are at a time and place where we need to think seriously about doing something that positively impacts our employees. Adding the funding from such a project would complement the monies from the FEFP, which the governor says he is looking to improve. Communities all over this state, both red and blue, have voted to stand in support of public education and local public schools to keep highly qualified employees dealing with students. I think it's time we do the same. Instead of running down a segment of our employees with additional time and workload expectations to seek savings to pass on to all, shouldn't we be touting that Pasco County was able to find creative ways to positively impact salaries for all employees while remaining one of the few counties still teaching only five periods a day. That sounds like a plus to me. And by the way, we do have uh, letters from members that we're going to share with the board so that you can take a look at those at your convenience. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, board member committee reports. We'll start with committees there, if that's okay. Yeah, I have none at this <laughs> yeah, time, thanks. Uh, no committee report. None this past week. I did. Um, I had the district vision and success plan meeting, and each pillar owner reviewed any changes they made to the metrics that they're going to measure this year. And I'm going to share these documents, but there's some, this is, so you, you can just read, you don't want me to review all this data. So that is that. Uh, but something else came up during that because I happened to be at a table with administrators and I wanted to share, um, I did some follow-up with Mr. Birch and uh, Mr. Shibley. So I wanted to share something that I learned, you may already know. But some administrators had some concerns um, about th that teachers can take leave of absence and work at charter schools. And that is um, legislative. So. That's a problem because we're holding that position and we can't advertise that position. So it's hard to attract teachers, qualified people to take that position so our students suffer. Um, I don't understand, that. I mean, I do understand the need that teachers, you know, they take medical leave, we have personal leave and all that. As a teacher, I did those things too. But I don't understand why um, we're allowing leaves for people to leave and go to work at charter schools and we have to hold that position. I just, I don't think it's fair for our students because we can only get professional guest teachers and people with one-year contracts rather than advertising for full-time positions. Um, so I did talk to Mr. Birch and uh, Mr. Shibley, and they gave me the, uh, the language from 
uh, both from the legislative and the bargaining, which of course that goes in line with the legislative, but is, I just wanted to know if we should consider um, look, you know, adding that to our legislative agenda, or can we consider allowing them to keep a position in the district, but not necessarily hold that position at the school? I don't know if um, Mr. Shibley or Mr. Birch has anything to add. I don't know if you want me to, I don't know if you are, got it. I have those, the statue. I don't know if you yeah. want to read you. Are those indefinite leaves? Well, and what, what I will tell you is the language in the collective bargaining agreement came after the statute. So right, the statute that's what I was first. saying. I'm sure yeah. it was in line. It was in that. response to the statute. Right. The problematic um, component of the statute for us is, and I think I highlighted in what I sent back, is that the Shall district... Shall not require resignations of teachers desiring to teach in Correct. schools. Correct. So we, can't, we cannot compel them to resign if they choose to go work um, for a charter school. Um, so I would be happy to work um, with Mr. Birch on some potential legislative fixes um, to your point. Um, that potentially authorize us to hold a position, but maybe not necessarily right. Like the I position. hold the position for them, but not necessarily tied up. Uh, but does anybody else have, share this Wait. concern? Yeah, I'm sorry, I might have missed that. I think you asked this, Miss Crumley. Yeah, is, is it, it indefinitely? Because when yeah. I mean, I had, I personally had taken a charter leave, so yes. I, I don't think it was indefinitely. There is no time bind to it. The stat, the statute okay. is says. I mean, basically, just the statement oh. is that the district school board cannot require a resignation from okay. a teacher who so desires is, to work at a charter school. No so they are basically right. on charter school leave indefinitely. Okay, so that leaves that position open. Tied, tied up because we can only hire like professional yes. guest teachers. We can't and hire. We only, we only hold the position at the school for the first... Um, is it is one, it two, or one, three? It's, I think it's the first two years of the leave, and then after that they are moved. But um, that's still two, two years yes. that, that, and we that can, principal cannot yeah, hire. That you know. So that just leaves like we can only hire like a temporary contract. Is that what that is? Is yes. that what that means? Yeah. Um, I'm just concerned for this. Yeah. Students. Yeah. Uh, I will be, I guess I should have said this maybe in the committee report, but it's future. I will be going Thursday to FSBA over to Orlando to do our final platform. I'll be happy to kind of mention that. Uh, that great. But I have a feeling that this is really would be something better that we work with Mr. Birch to to try to uh, uh, put it into another bill or um, you know I, I don't as, as opposed to putting it on a, a platform item. Uh, and some of it may be an item that we can work with um, USCP to address locally. We have some standard provisions that require us to hold positions at schools for certain leave duration amounts. Um, we may be able to work with them to carve out an exception for charter school leave to say that teachers on leave from charter schools don't have positions held at their individual their schools school. for as long as, as other types of leave. So that's certainly a possibility, but one that we would have to work through at the bargaining table. But we table. want them to come back to us, so like maybe they can still well, that's like, what I'm saying. They still have a position. I, I was recommending like we'd still have a position in the district. Correct. But we just yeah. would tie up a spot yeah. at that school. I, I, and that's what I happens with most other types of leave is once you pass a certain point, yeah, because they're I've transferred had that to human to resources, too. and then once they return from that leave, whether it's military or extended health or whatever the purpose is, we then look to see where we have vacancies and those teachers are offered those positions at that point. So do, there are some local things that we can try and do to accelerate the timeline of how long the position at this specific school is held. Um, but I don't puts think... It puts our leaders in, in a tough spot because absolutely. they have a hard time getting people. It really I just happened to come up while I was at this and so yeah. I was at a table and somebody said it and I said, and no, do, that can't be in the legislature. But do we yeah. have any idea how many do this? Um, Mr. Gadd actually just asked me that. I can get you a read. I would say it's not more than a handful or a couple handful. I think it's certain um, but schools. Yes, I got the impression it, certain schools are impacted more than other schools. Especially when a new charter school opens um, and especially when a new charter school opens with leaders from someone who used to be a former employee of ours, you will see um, you know, particular schools impacted more than others with several teachers from local schools choosing to go work for that charter school. I think we saw that with Learning Lodge um, in particular. We saw a high number of teachers leave um, with that principal and, that, and they took charter school leave instead of resigning. Even though nine times out of ten, uh, I think our experience has been that those teachers don't ever return to us as teachers. They, they don't. They, yeah. They, but well, I understand concern. why they do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I would do that too. Right. If I could they, take the leave, protection. I would do it. Right. Um, my concern is, um, for example, last year when we had te teacher shortages last year, 
this is a problem mm -hmm. well, it's in not. our high schools particularly. Well, we can't have, find enough algebra teachers, and if they're taking off and taking leave, I, I And we I, can't hire, offer somebody and, yeah, a permanent, well, permanent position. Yeah, a permanent position. Nobody's going right. to take that permanent position. And that's not fair to our students. So. I didn't realize no, it was it really did. Did. Our like students that, pay the that price of like that. Yeah. Our students will pay the price of that. I, I did not even, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Okay, Thank that you for sharing. <laughs> Oh, okay, me. Sorry. So, um, committee next committee, committee reports. I had no committees <laughs> to meet. Sorry, um, Mr. Browning, Superintendent. The only thing I need to remind the board uh, of is is that uh, we've confirmed with FSBA uh, November first. Oh, okay. uh, so November first oh. will be the date of our last uh, master board training session. Uh, it'll be scheduled from eight in the morning till twelve noon, okay. and uh, we'll be sending an email out. Uh, to all the board members okay. as we get closer, but we'll send an email out now and confirm that with you so you can get on your calendar, and then we'll Thank just uh, send a reminder out. What, but that, that has been confirmed. What was that other date that we had on the there? 15th. I want to delete it. Yeah, yeah. So delete the 15th. Yeah. We're on for the first. first. That's all, all right. I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gadd, Deputy Superintendent. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Oh, okay. Mr. Shibley. There is an addendum to item 10.1 that has been uploaded into the board packet. Um, I'm also going to let the board know that within the next week or two, you will be receiving um, the drafts for the 19.2 NEOLA update, and we will uh, are currently planning on having a workshop for that at the beginning of October. Uh, so be on the lookout for that as well. All right. Thank you. This is Cohn. Good evening. I'm excited this evening to ask Mary Gray, our Director of After School Enrichment Programs, to come to the podium. I'm excited to share with you some information about our summer camps that we had this past summer that all of you were so supportive of and to highlight that for you. So I'd like to ask Mary Gray to come up and tell you a little bit more about our summer programs. All right, thank you. Welcome, Mary. Hi. I'm excited to hear this. Thank you. I'm excited to have the opportunity to share with you all about what we did as we know that uh, this uh, past year we started out the year um, conducting um, a thought exchange. And that thought exchange was asking families and students uh, what kinds of things would they be interested in learning about during the summer that would cause them to come to a summer camp. And our goal was try to provide something for middle and high school students. We had a wonderful response to that. The overall theme was career information how to teach kids or have kids participate in things that would help um, guide some career decisions for them as they got older, as well as self-independence kinds of things, you know, budgeting and that kind of stuff. So working with our career and technical education department to identify some current programs that are happening in the district and how we could best make use of our teachers in those areas and the locations, um, we came up with four different topics that we offered to the students during the summer. One we called early educators. And that was really giving an introduction to students to actually learn everything there is, whether they want to be a babysitter if they're young, to maybe a preschool teacher as they get a little older, maybe eventually you know, become a school teacher uh, and, and learn about all the world of kids. Uh, we also had uh, culinary camps, and that we offered to kindergarten through fifth grade in one camp, and we called them the culinary cadets. And then the second camp was called Chop It Like It's Hot, and that was for our sixth through twelfth graders. Um, our third camp was aerospace, where kids could learn everything there is to learn about aerospace, uh, anything aeronautic relation, uh, doing drones and things like that. And we also offered two camps, one for kindergarten through fifth grade and a second one for sixth through twelfth. Our fourth camp was called Amp It Up, Aspiring Medical Professionals. And that was solely for sixth through twelfth grade. During the summer, we served 108 kids in our four camps. And we uh, limited each camp to only 20 students. We wanted them to have a real good immersion experience. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to Carlotta Mathis. Carlotta is our enrichment specialist. And her whole goal this summer was to work with the teachers, work with uh, uh, Mike Maciarola over in um, CTE, and to really figure out how we can get this program together. Carlotta um, got herself trained in first aid CPR and AED as a trainer and actually provided training with certificates through Red Cross for all of our students that participated in the Early Educator Program and in the Amp It Up Program. So I'd like to just introduce you to Carlotta. One, two, three, 
down, Carlotta. She has done an amazing job. It was fabulous. And when she's through, we'd like to just show you a quick little snippet video um, that our technology folks put together for us. So you could kind of see just a little bit of the kids in action. Hi. So uh, the kids enjoyed their culinary experience. They learned to uh, make po homemade pasta, different types of homemade pizza. And our early educators, uh, we had the little gators come from Land Lakes High School, and they got hands-on experience with the preschoolers, and in the um, aerospace camp, they got to fly simulators, they got to fly drones, they all took away something from their camp. Um, for instance, the Amp It Up camp, they took away stethoscopes, they took away blood pressure cuffs, they got certified in CPR first aid. Our culinary and cadets, they took away um, spatulas and hats and aprons, so, and they made their own cookbooks, so the, all the kids had a great time in the camp, and like she said, we served over um, 108 kids in our camp for the summer. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Great job. So all, of our, all of our camps were taught by certified teachers here in the district, um, which was really great. They were specialized in their, in their areas during the school year. Um, so some of our older students may have gotten to know them, but I know we got a lot of response. Our lowest attending camp was our early educators. That was the first one out the door. But by the end of the camp, the kids were saying, are you going to do this again next year? We want to do it. And with the culinary camp, we had parents asking if we were going to do something for adults yeah. next year oh, because they wanted cool. to learn how to do the healthy cooking. So it was really exciting for the first year for it to be received as well as it did. Um, and we had a waiting list at some of our camps. So we'll see what we do next year. But thank you for supporting it and for allowing this thank to you. go on this year. We're very proud of what we did. And I'm very proud of Carlotta and the work that she did this summer. Uh, to get it all going for us. So here's a little show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Impressive. Oh, it was impressive. I just have to say, I've heard so many positive things about that because I know so many people in this Land of Lakes, Lutz, Wesley Chapel area, all really great things the parents were saying. So I'm so grateful that you did it. Thank you. And of course, my son got to attend too, so I was really happy about that. But, <laughs> but no, it was, it was great. All, all the feedback, every single parent, they were raving about it. They were talking about it to other parents. It was great. Thank you. Thank you for your work on that. Well We're done. Going to expand it. Exactly. Expand. Oh, they're already working on expand. that. Expand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I'm sure. You don't Just have to ask them to do that. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. 
Very well done, thank you. Anything else, Mrs. Coon? Yes, so I'm also okay. excited tonight to share with you a little bit more about Crisis Go, and so I'd like to ask Christo, our Director of Safety and Security, to come to the podium and to do a brief overview of Crisis Go, which we're getting ready to launch in our secondary schools and our high schools right now. It will then be going to, um, to our middle schools and then to our elementary schools split into two groups. And we've been working closely with the Sheriff's Office on this and then also met with our two municipal police chiefs to discuss it as well. So it's been very well received by our municipalities and we're looking forward to sharing it with you tonight. Chris. Welcome, Mr. Stowe. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to drive from over here so I'm going to display Mr. Dunn for a few minutes if you don't mind so you guys okay. can see me actually okay. kind of going through the app and it'll be probably a little easier to walk and talk it. Okay. Um, and then if you have questions. Uh, so as you all know, uh, we received a competitive grant for uh, a crisis communications tool. Uh, that would be able to, to create real-time peer-to-peer communications uh, during a crisis while we're in school. So that would be uh, active, active threat plan, that would be our fire emergencies, that would be evacuations, and there would be sub subcomponents to that that safety teams could uh, then administer themselves inside if they're having an unruly student, if they're needing some help with an EBD unit, things of that nature. They can do peer-to-peer real-time without having to get on get on necessarily their, their uh, telecom system or it's right at the touch of their hand. It's either in their laptop, it's in their uh, iPads, and it's also uh, available to download on their phones. Uh, this also has, uh, so every staff member will have access to this. Uh, every uh, technological device in the district has already had this push to it. Uh, so it has it, and we are doing a rollout to, uh, we're doing it in, in, in sections. So uh, the first ones we're rolling out to the high schools, then we have uh, River Ridge Complex and Westwood Chapel Complex and Gulf Highlands Elementary. Uh, they're, going, they're actually getting classes from the vendor uh, this month, and then they will go live with the intent to do a drill in October using this app uh, solely. So we, at the district, kind of experimented with over the summer, and we did two drills. We did a fire drill and we did an ATP drill at the district utilizing the system as well, uh, and it went, I thought, very well. Uh, everyone felt very informed. We got very positive feedback from the district staff uh, and feeling that they were informed. Uh, we were able to do safety check-ins and things like that. So if you take a look, uh, this is kind of what the what the app itself looks like. It's, it's very simple. It's very intuitive. Uh, the left-hand column here where my arrow is, is basically they're just messaging groups. So if you think of them as like group mess group text messages, it's very similar to that. And, and your, your principal or your school principal and AP, they can set up their own uh, different ones. They want to have a safety team. If they want to have a leadership team. If they want to have uh, academics, you know, whatever they want to have in there. They can set that up however they like to. Uh, they're given training to, to run a, a separate system, which is a dashboard that drives this app. So they're doing that as well. But at its, at its base layer, it's only a couple of pushes away from uh, setting out an alert that it goes to a law enforcement escalation group. So like Mrs. Kuhn was saying, that we've, we've uh, established a law enforcement escalation group with the Pasco Sheriff's Office and our municipal partners. Uh, so they're all their dispatch centers and the fire, fire emergency fire folks will be in that escalation group as well. So if one of these three, so as an example, I'm not going to push start on it for sure, but mm -hmm. this little uh, icon down here at the bottom is called a fast alert, and it brings up one of three choices, and it's active threat, fire, or evacuation. So any of these three, uh, and mine looks a little different because I'm an administrator, so if I push that, I can set it up to alert or drill, so when you want to run your drill, you can run it. And then I can also choose what communications <coughs> group I'm going to send this to. I'm going to send it to all... <laughs> you know, tens of thousands of employees in the district, am I going to send it to just superintendent and staff, uh, or am I going to send it to our building, things of that nature, so um, that'll be accessible for us. And then I can type in, you know, a message here, you know, this is a test, you know, something <laughs> like that. You know, I can do that, and they'll send it out real time. So uh, we, as an example, we use this during the hurricane prepare, uh, preparedness, our superintendent staff. So. I stopped right on the fly. Uh, let's show you how simple it was. I hadn't done it before. In the meeting we were in, I set up a, a, a message group for the superintendent's leadership staff, and we communicated during the entirety of the planning process for a Hurricane Dorian through Crisis Go. So I think it works fantastic. So they have to have the app, or does it go to their they cell do. phone? They okay. do. So, it, so there, is a, there is an app you can download for free on the Android uh, market or iOS. And then it's also automatically pushed to all of our technological devices that are in the district, so they already have them. And I have to say, it's very easy to download. I, I went ahead and downloaded, and then I was so scared I was going to hit <laughs> and start an alert. Yeah, I know. I, would be <laughs> I, I, I did come in for a little quick training uh -huh. with uh, Chris Stowe, and it's, it is very simple and easy to use. And there's, uh, I would encourage you to download the app because there's a, a lot of useful uh, data on there that that I appreciate having at my fingertips in case we did have a crisis. And then the, only, the one other thing quickly I'll, I'll go over, if, if I may, 
uh, is the organizational side. So in the past, we've had our crisis flip charts that have been at the schools, yeah. they've been in the buildings and things of that nature. Yeah. Well, they're now on the app, so they're there 100%. So okay. if we go into our checklists, and then I move down here, and I move to active threat plan, our entire active threat plan crisis flip chart is now right there uh, at, your, at your fingertips, literally. So um, you can do, you can, ch you can use it, because we're all, all of our educators are typically checklist folks. Right, so they can knock it off as they do it on the checklist. They can okay. add a note if they want to do something. They can send messages to folks in their safety team. They're like, I can't, get my door is stuck, or I can't move this over, or you know, whatever they need to do. So, so that's all real time. And then, whenever one of these alerts is sent up, say it was an active threat, say it was the worst of the worst, right? Uh, and a law enforcement isolation group gets automatically added to that build that that school's uh, message group automatically. So, all the law enforcement folks are already in there. So the 911 dispatchers are there communicating. Uh, wow. So it hop happens automatically. So as soon as they hit that alert, the law enforcement escalation group is already in there. So they can communicate as, as the real-time crime center from the sheriff's office pulls up the cameras and starts giving intelligence to the law enforcement folks that are responding. Then the dispatchers that are, uh, that are monitoring this can help, help guide uh, our administrators during a crisis uh, real-time in this app as well. So it also has for responding officers and folks like that. It has our maps. So all the maps for all of our schools are in here as well. And then one of the best one of the best functions that I, I see, I'm not going to pull it up on the on the open screens, mm -hmm. is roster reunification stuff for students when we do evacuation, we do reunification sites. So it's all tied to our one roster, so it's updated every 24 hours. Oh, somebody actually hit one. Let's see who did that. Is the app called Crisis Go? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crisis Go. But Mrs. Kuhn sent us an email that had a link to it yeah. that oh, yeah, it, that remember. has the authorization. Yeah, because you know, because you have to be authorized to to get the data, so I would suggest going through that email. But by other words, just anybody just can't download it and yeah, get no, all that said, information. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, good. That was a good test. And you said you heard that go over the devices that were in the district. That's what you heard was the tone from from the app. That's really cool. Okay. That's so quickly, um, if I may, also um, is. Uh, I was going to mention something that just completely flew out of my head right there. So it doesn't matter. It was either uh, a lie or it was something made up. So, what schools are rolling it out again? You so it will be the, the, the high schools, uh, River Ridge Complex, Wesley Chapel, Chapel, Chapel Complex, Chapel. and Gulf Highlands <laughs> Elementary. Okay. They will have that first here in September. There are, the principals are already, I sent them a, a significant amount of links for them to contact mm -hmm. the vendor to set up training on their own. It's web-based uh, web training, live interactive training that they do with the vendor. Uh, and then the principals will set up their dashboard training so that they can actually manage their own drill schedule, they can manage their own buildings, they can manage their own message groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll move after about a week or so of feedback from the, the high schools and the pilot schools there, move into the middle schools, same thing, feedback, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll do half of the elementary schools, right. and then we'll do the other half. And then the last two functions are student-facing uh, bullet or tip uh, type function, it's one-way communication only from the students. Um, and then there's a, a, a parent-facing portion they can opt in, and they can also then provide tips and information back to, to us as well. So that's it in a nutshell, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to also discuss this later on with you all or set up training for you all if you wanted as well. I'm happy to do that. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Very well. Appreciate it. Mrs. Kuhn, anything else? No other good news to share, but thank you to Chris yeah. and to Mary and Carlotta and Son for being here tonight. Yeah, that was great. So, Mrs. Swenson? No? Nothing? Okay. Mrs. Hilton. Good evening. Um, I lost my notes. I'm happy to share some things with you um, this evening. We have completed um, walkthroughs for 22 of our priority schools. So we've been in those schools, elementary, middle, and high, starting the first week of school, um, check, getting some baseline data um, and making plans of supports for those schools. Um, also, as you um, know, item 9.4 um, indicates that we are grant recipients of a nationwide uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant, one of 12 recipients in the nation. Um, this is not a matching or an in-kind grant. Um, and funds will support high quality professional learning aimed at ensuring our middle school mathematics and structural materials are implemented in a manner to meet the needs of all of our students. If you have any questions about that, feel free. Um, we're happy to answer any of those questions. Also, we saw uh, many of you at the East and West Side Adult Education graduations um, recently, celebrating the success of students who've persevered often through um, lots of hard days. And we were able to also see the top 10% of these graduates honored with scholarships from PHSC. Thank you so much for 
always supporting these events. Um, tomorrow is our first day of early release and we are excited to prioritize that time to launch our social emotional learning focus. As you heard earlier, that's a um, great need in our district. And so staff from across the district will engage in professional development aimed at integrating social emotional learning competencies uh, into instruction in the school environment. Um, so thank you also for your support of that. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to let you know a couple things. The first is that we recently received word from State of Florida PBIS that we have several schools that have received model school recognition for their efforts last school year. Um, and of course, many of our schools have PBIS programs alive and well, but what FLPBIS recognition means is that they took some extra steps to be recognized for their achievement. At middle school level, Hudson Middle School was recognized with the Gold Level Award, and River Ridge Middle School was recognized with the Bronze. And I know uh, there will be many for, more this coming school year. Uh, for, for our audience, would you please tell them what that stands for? Yeah. That would be the Positive Behavior Incentive Systems. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know, no, I have more. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and this one I'll really spell out. Or I could do it all in uh, initials. I've got Amy Riddle, our principal from Gulf Middle School. She is currently at FLIBS, which is the Florida International Baccalaureate World Schools group. She is at the Middle Years Program Workshop, where she is establishing um, capacity to begin implementation of the Middle Years Program at Gulf Middle School for next year, which I know you'll hear, hear some more about next week. Um, but we're very excited to have her there engaging in that learning. Um, we have two opportunities that I want to call your attention to coming up in the next couple weeks. One on the west side, a topic that you just explored in the workshop earlier this evening. It's called Clear the Fog. It's a presentation for parents and community members to educate them around the uh, vaping epidemic. Um, that's going to take place, place at Bayonet Middle on September 26th. And then on the east side of the county, over at Pasco Middle, we have something called Social Media Savvy, which is also a parent education workshop on the 18th tied to their PBIS launch or Positive Behavior Intervention Systems. And that's at Pasco Middle again. Um, again, two topics that were really designed to help us focus on some areas outside of education that certainly impact the work that we do every day with families. And then finally, just to remind you tonight, we do have um, several schools kicked off last week, but the majority of our middle schools are kicking off their football this evening, which of course engages not only the athletes, but the cheerleaders and the bands and their parents and boosters and our volleyball players are alive and well. Lots of activities around the county. So thank you for your support of all those. Would you, I'm sorry before you go on. You said the, the vaping one, the clear the fog, is at Bayonet Point? Yes. And that's on the 26th? September 26th. It's also on their website and social media. Oh, okay. Do you know what time? Um, I can. I, can, oh, if you don't have it, I think okay. it's 6 p.m., but I'll confirm oh, okay. for you while Ms. Poe's talking. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right, thank you very All much, right. Ms. Moving Poe. on to elementary, I know she mentioned the middle schools who were recognized for the um, PBIS um, awards. We do have several elementaries at the bronze level. We have Cody River, uh, Minnie P. Lock, Northwest, and Schrader. Moving to the silver level, we have Double Branch Elementary, and then um, uh, Attaining the gold level, we have Chasco Elementary, Chester Taylor Elementary, Cypress Elementary, Moon Lake, and New River Elementary. So a lot to celebrate on those efforts. We definitely know that we see that alive and well in all of our schools, but as Marcy mentioned, these schools went above and beyond to attain those three different levels um, of achievement. Um, I also just wanted to recognize that we had a great turnout at our Starkey K-8 groundbreaking uh, last Thursday. Very exciting to see the first kindergarten class represented. Um, um, that was definitely a delight to see them lead the Pledge of Allegiance and just to be a part because that is what it's all about. It's about our up and coming students and their future here in Pasco County. So to see the excitement of the parents, the community members, and all of um, just the great um, excitement building around the partnership with our county, um, it's definitely 
worth the wait and we're looking forward to August 2021 to see that come alive. Um, and one final thing that I wanted to share is that it was Grandparents Day this past weekend and it's exciting to see our elementary schools really um, honor the role that a grandparent plays um, in the life of a child and especially the life of a child at um, elementary school. So last week and this week there are grandparents teas and breakfasts and all sorts of recognitions just in um, honoring of that family engagement at the elementary school and beyond. So I wanted to recognize and thank all the grandparents and the parts they play in our in our schools. I get a two for one. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Isles? Uh, just a couple of things tonight. Um, one, I do want to reiterate what Mary Gray said about the great camps that occurred this summer. Um, my niece actually attended the medical skills camp and um, she had the option of going to the beach. She had the option of participating in a running club. And so it just speaks volumes that she chose to stay in the program. So great work by Mary Gray and her team. Also want to share some news from the high schools. Um, one, Principal Stanley asked me to share that um, her athletic trainer, Nikki Fry, actually assisted and helped in a medical episode that happened with a community member at a game. Um, and she just talked about how much she appreciated Nikki Fry and what a difference she made. And just having her there in that situation, how much it helped. So I wanted to give that recognition to Nikki Fry. Also, if you didn't see the press release at Sun Lake High School, the American Geographical Society announced that Ms. Ann Collison at Sun Lake High School is a geographic teacher named, selected to participate in a year-long professional development and to receive resources from them throughout the year. She is one of 50 teachers selected across the United States. So that's quite an accomplishment. Also at Cypress Creek Middle High School, um, we do have an up and coming leader, um, Ten Light, that he actually helped coordinate some of the um, assistant principal trainings at the district level. He works specifically with SSPS, and I want to make sure I give that department a lot of credit as well, um, but around the My Grad success. And that's important because it really ties into the interventions that are happening for kids, and it ties into our graduation rate. And then we are really focused on student experiences, making sure students are college, career, and life ready. And that does mean um, above and beyond even academic achievement. So I do just want to give recognition to the following high schools who immediately launched um, from their student groups that students said, we have to do some collections and donations, and we have to give back for um, the Dorian hurricane and the devastation that happened in the Bahamas. So that is Gulf High School, Crin, Sun Lake High School, Wiregrass, and Pasco High School. So lots of great stuff going on out there. Great job. Dr. Skanka? <laughs> Andy? <laughs> I always have to see if he's paying attention. Vanessa, something else. I'm sorry. No, so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we do one? He's going to get me one day with a really he bad so picture sorry. of me. Like three seconds later. <laughs> oh, it's delayed. Yeah. He's just gonna, in case we say something inappropriate, yeah. you can like. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna fix me with a really bad mm -hmm. picture of me one day somewhere. Uh, the, the, right. Mrs. Ms. Crumley, Vanessa. Oh, can we, can we add one more thing? Well, of first course. of all, time. The time for the clear the fog is 6:15 p.m. Okay. on the 26th. I actually have a dream. All right. Thank you. And then also, we just want, I, I apologize for failing to mention that this week we also are um, celebrating Accessibility Week. Um, and so uh, each day we are highlighting different features in our devices that help support um, students in uh, the accessibility of curriculum, instruction, things to read, math, uh, any, any part of the um, learning experience. Um, and we're doing that in partnership with Apple Education and um, appreciate the support from them and appreciate all the folks who have worked to bring that to life and really provide that information to our um, teachers to the benefit of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to expulsion recommendations and hearings. And yes, we have none this week. It's always a good week. Okay, seven, uh, consent agenda. Does any board member have an item to pull, discuss, anything like that? I actually I was going to pull 9 4, but they've covered so it completely. Was I. So. Yes. I have, so was I. I have one, though. Oh, a different okay. one. Sorry. I had, I had still one thing to say about 9 4. Okay, but go, go ahead, ahead. Mrs. Bodwin. Oh, 9 1. 9 okay. 1. 
All right, so I, so I guess I should say first then, I need a motion to approve. The I'll agenda. move approval of the consent agenda with the right. exception of 9.1 and adding the downloaded docs to 10.1. And right, 10.1. Second. And, okay, didn't you have one too? 9.4 and 9.1. No. no, I was just pulling 9.1. Okay, I wanted to say something about 9.4 really fast too. So that How about one, it? You're the chair. Okay. So do we have to pull it? Okay, well, don't we again? need to have a second first? We have, we uh, have oh, a first. Oh, oh, do, do you want to pull 9.4? I guess yes. that's the question. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I'll add 9.4 to okay. pull in 9.1. Okay. Uh, second. Okay. Discussion? <laughs> Who wants to go first? No. Got to vote on that. What? We got to vote first? No, no, no. no. Uh, well, oh, yeah, we got to vote on those other Consent items. Um, yeah, but we vote on, yes, we need to vote on okay. the other items. And then we'll come to these. Well, so we vote we on talk about it and then we vote. No, no, we're only voting on the ones we did not pull. Okay, and this is why I didn't write Robert's rules yes. and why you were here. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approved. Okay. So who would like to go first, 9.1? I'll do 9.1 since that comes first numerically. I just wanted to um, share some uh, some information that um, the questions that I asked about this is, I'm talking about the statewide assessment calendar if, if you wanted to look at it um, if you pull it up so it's an, it's 9.1 and it's the uniform excuse me the uniform assessment calendar um, so there were a couple things that I had asked um, Dr. Jones Peggy Jones to clarify for me so I just wanted to share the information that she gave me uh, I asked what life-centered education was, and that assessment is provided to students in the upper grades, 11 and 12, who are pursuing access points. So those are the, you know, the students that are, well, I think everyone knows what access points are. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I had also asked about the NWEA, because I was familiar with that test, but I was asking if all schools were, t all the schools were using it. I said I thought only some were, and that it was in lieu of the quarterly checks, and I, it wasn't clear to me on the, calendar because it looked like maybe students were taking NWEA and quarterlies and ERLA. Um, so I had asked about that. I said, it looks like our K-5 students are taking all three of those. Is that correct? Aren't they all reading in ELA assessments? And Dr. Jones said that, yes, I was correct, but only some schools are administering the NWEA MAP, MAP, I guess it is, and it's only, and it is in place of the quarterly, so they aren't doing both. Um, and all other schools are admissing, administering the quarterly checks in the ERLA. So there are also quarterly checks for science and math in select grades. But I just wanted to make sure that the students weren't doing both, and she said they're not. And then um, I didn't doubt her. <laughs> and then regarding district finals window, um, I was pleased to see. So it is through the 27th. So, um, so I asked, so nobody can make up a final after the last day of school. And she said, we do have the ability for students cape case by case to make up in the planning day. Um, traditionally, schools don't request it, but they do have the ability. So I just wanted to make the point, which I know I've made the point every year, but uh, the district is not restricting administrators or denying them the ability to give makeup tests on 527. Um, it's a school-based choice not to do that and to waste those last two days at schools and use them for makeups. And I still um, just, have to express my displeasure that we waste those two days in a lot of schools and in a lot of classrooms. Not all of them, but in a lot of them. Um, so I am grateful that the window is open till the last day of school. I would prefer that it be open a little longer for makeups, but she said that the, we do have the ability to do that. So that lies on the, the school leadership to make those choices, I guess. So that was it. Okay. So I move to approve 9.1. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. So on 9.4, then just briefly, I just wanted to point out um, and thank the Lori Romano, Leah Mitchell, and Michelle Kernan for your involvement in getting this million dollar grant for us. It's, uh, it's a very big deal to us. And I happened to notice Mr. Kempel was out of the room when Mrs. Hilton explained that it is not a matching grant, it's to prepare teachers for new middle school math curriculum, which is called Open Up Resources. And um, it's an excellent grant, and we're really excited to have this. So it's different. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, it's we'll scary. take this, and we're very excited. And again, I'm, I just want to recognize y'all for your work on this. Thank you very much. So I, would, I move to approve. I guess, do what, can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, oh, I don't can know. She? 
Somebody else, I think, has to. I'll do make that. a motion to approve okay. 9.4. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that was it for me. So, okay, so did we already approve it? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. okay, moving on. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right. That's why I didn't go to law school. Okay. All right, no miscellaneous action items tonight. Individual board member reports. Would you like to start at this end or this end, <laughs> ladies? It's up to you. It's we both have a lot, point. so it doesn't <laughs> we've missed a meeting, so. All right, well, we'll start here for once, <laughs> okay. if that's okay. okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'm ready. My, this is a um, good one. Okay, so I visited John Long Middle School. I had a chance to walk through the classrooms and learn more about the differentiating differentiation that's taking place there as well as the industry certifications that they offered. So I've enjoyed touring John Long. Um, I also attended the Citizens Academy, so now I'm gonna go before you. So. Yeah. And <laughs> Ms. Harding was there as well. Um, and I do appreciate the effort of the district folks to and the communications with the community and, the, and I also appreciate the community members who are giving their time to learn more about our district operations. I sincerely hope that these folks will be ambassadors for our districts when they engage with their own neighbors and friends. Um, I also attended the East Side Adult Ed commencement, and that is always a pleasure to celebrate the accomplishments of the students who are earning their diplomas, GED, and child care and uh, cosmetology certifications. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention that all the grants that were on the agenda, so 9-4 through 9-6, and again, thank the teams working on applying and securing those grants, because I'm pleased to see these are consistently showing up on our agendas every week, every two weeks, I should say. So thank you for that. Um, I visited Oakstead Elementary, and there was a big focus on kindness there this year. And I also um, noted that at least one of the grades, I think it was fifth grade, so somebody may correct me if I'm wrong, um, that the teachers are specializing this year. So it'll be interesting to hear the pros, cons, lessons learned at the end of the year, because I do like that idea, and I, I'm interested to see what they think about it at the end of the year. Um, we all attended master board training with the superintendent, so thank you to everyone who came to that. We talked a lot about communication. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, hey, hey, this is for Andy. Uh, the superintendent, um, the School Matters video that you posted, and, and maybe I just didn't see it, but I tried to see if, it, if I could click for closed captioning, if maybe we could do that, because I know some people watch those, I think, at work a lot of times, so you don't want to have the volume on, where if it was closed caption, they could read it. I was, it was just a suggestion. Well, closed caption all the videos that Superintendent okay. Browning does. Oh, okay. It just, that I one, clicked. That one was not closed caption. Oh, okay. I will make sure it's done in the Oh, okay. I was just thinking especially that one because it's going out to the, to the yes. school-based folks, and they probably yeah. would be easier for them to read it. We have hard of hearing teachers as well that request that as staff members. So oh, okay. Okay. I just happened to notice that this week. Yeah. And then I, um, <laughs> I suppose I wasn't supposed to direct him, but since you pointed him out, I probably was supposed to go through you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry that I did that. I didn't follow the chain of command. Um, it's something that came up this week, a few teachers mentioned this to me, um, and I saw it from the parent portal. So in my student now, there, there's a capability to message teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't, ever, so a few teachers, yeah, a few teachers brought this up to me. Um, so I was just, I was told that it's going like directly to the teacher. I don't need, let me just finish and then we'll, <laughs> to the teachers through this messaging and it's not going to their email. So, and then for a teacher to reply, they have to log on to my student and respond there. So it's, it's, it's something that, I don't know if that was something that was planned or if this occurred inadvertently with some update, but I was wondering if there was a reason for it because the teachers were concerned that now this is another place that they have to check where it used to just email them. We'll so I don't there. expect an answer right now. I just wanted to find we'll out there. if there was a reason for it or if it's something happened. But a few teachers were like, now there's another thing that I have to check and then I got to log in there to try to respond. And then um, just one last thing, and I do <coughs> love this when my two passions connect. Um, I was at a UT meeting and I sat with the education department and they had mentioned seeing the new teacher, the River Ridge New Teacher Academy, 
at, um, at a conference and were raving about it, so they wanted to connect and they want to send their interns out to see our program with Beth Hess. So they have connected and they're working that out. But I thought that that was pretty cool that the university saw such a value um, in what Beth Hess and they're doing, her team is doing at River Ridge, so they're going to connect and maybe get something going there. That's it for me. Thank you. So um, I attended the adult ed graduation along with uh, most of where you did the handshaking on the <laughs> stage, uh, attended this Starkey K-8 groundbreaking and um, most of our citizens don't recognize how truly uh, significant that is for our county and that our staff has taken the leadership in that. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it is a true public-public-private partnership where the county, the school district, and the developer have worked together. And instead of duplicating efforts on parks and libraries and parking and stuff, we're all doing it together and sharing. And it's uh, going to be a tremendous benefit to the taxpayers and citizens and allow each of those people to have better resources by coming together and Mr. Gadd and his team uh, were the drivers on that, and, and I appreciate their efforts. Uh, I attended the Pasco High School uh, Cambridge meeting for parents and education session, attended the Pasco High School Open House and the San Antonio Elementary uh, Open House. We, uh, that school has grown now with such uh, traffic that uh, Ms. Kuhn has been dealing with those <laughs> issues because we're, we are attracting and, um, and drawing some kids. I, I'm not going to publicly share some of the stories, but I was there the other day and because I know so many of these people, I recognize some of them who came from private and charter schools that are there at Santa Ana Elementary because of the Cambridge program. and. Uh, they're, they're doing a great job there. And then I just wanted to, uh, again, thank Mary Gray and Carlotta for your efforts on the summer camp. Uh, I'm, like Ms. Bowden, I have heard absolutely nothing but positive and people calling wanting to know, are they gonna have more of those in our area? Um, I would throw one out to you to think about, it may seem really strange, but uh, being in the insurance business, during budget cuts, we had to do away with driver's ed and I can't tell you how many parents have asked me about the ability to have some sort of summer program. So I loved your safety stuff and the CPR being an old EMT that I think is great if we could think about driver's ed and safety thrown into a camp. I, I think you'd get some tremendous participation and they'd even be willing to pay a little bit because if they pass and we're certified they get to save a lot of money just and wiregrass ranch did do one because my son went to that one too. Okay. they did but i don't think it was well publicized and a parent told me about it but yeah, i don't I know, know i don't know what other schools did it but um, so anyway thank you all for that we could probably it was probably. all positive That's a very much <clears throat> that's it <laughs> mrs armstrong okay yes um you know, as was stated, we all attended the, the master board training, and I just can't reiterate how important uh, the master board training has been to uh, uh, bring us where we can better understand uh, how we can function as a board to, to be more efficient and, and to accomplish our goals. Um, went to the West Adult uh, Education graduation, uh, students coming out of Marchman uh, Technical College. Always a pleasure to see those students that really didn't think they were going to graduate, watching them graduate and wa walking across the stage. Um, the, uh, went, as mentioned before, we had the grand op gr opening or grand groundbreaking for the Starkey Ranch uh, K-12, uh, K-8, I'm sorry, I wrote K-12. Uh, that would be a really big school. Uh, but but th that is... We could use it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's been a long time coming. I remember, you know, s sitting in the 
uh, county uh, board meetings because they had to participate in this, the school board meetings, I think we even had some joint meetings. Uh, just uh, to get this accomplished and have to thank we, the developer Wheelock for uh, participating <coughs> with us uh, in this venture. I mean, just the idea of being able, uh, a parent being able to take their uh, kid down to the, uh, to the library where the kid, and the kid takes them in and say, hey, look, this is what I did in school today at this, you know, right here and then dropping the kid off, then going and playing some uh, hoops in the gymnasium at, at the school, and then having another son over there at, at the sports field uh, participating in the sports league. Uh, all right there is just really a, a boon uh, to the community, also to the county, the, uh, just the savings that we can have not duplicating all those uh, buildings and programs. Uh, the other thing I did is I went to the Pasco Economic Development Council Awards and Trade Show. Uh, this is something that, uh, as a school district, we've been very active in in the past, and I think we need to get back to it, and this is why. During the trade show, I took it upon myself to go around to each of those businesses and ask them about mentorships, and the ones that were uh, related to any of our uh, career um, academies, you know, I said, you know, any leads on, on uh, instructors that might be interested and in, any nurses that are ready to retire but still want to give back to the community, we want them. So uh, it's, it's something, it's a rich source of support for our uh, career academies uh, and for our schools in general. So I, I think we need to have a, a bigger presence in that organization uh, like we've done in, in the past. Okay. When we get our CTE person, we will be involved y there. Yes, uh, yeah. there, there is. Uh, it's part of it. It's part of it. But what we need to do is, is we are going, in the past we've actually been, um, I, I've, I forgot the exact term they have when you belong to the organization, but we've, we've paid our dues and belong to the organization, mm -hmm. and I think we need to look at that as a possibility a in, the, in the future. No. I agree. That's it for Thank me. Thank you. Great. Um, Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Um, I really just wanted to take a moment um, and thank uh, Mrs. Kuhn, Mr. Fox, and his entire maintenance staff. I, I cannot speak, I cannot say the most amazing things about them. Um, they, just problem after problem has occurred this year, and not little problems, like big problems have occurred. And they have been on it, been able to fix it. Um, the communication, uh, we, from Mr. Fox and I has been it, so I can, um, and the communication between Mr. Fox and the staff at the schools. Um, I just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I know that y'all's job is not that easy, um, but I just can't thank you enough, and I'm just, I know we all are so thankful for you. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone who was involved in the preparation for Hurricane Dorian, um, from everyone who listened to the emergency center calls, so the schools are ready to take um, in citizens for shelters. Um, we really, really are blessed that it did not hit us. Um, and I also wanted to thank Mr. Browning for allowing time for our families to get prepared and for keeping everyone informed. Um, I also wanted to, again, thank those that were involved in those grants. I, too, like to see all the money in there, so that's really awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, I, too, attended the First Citizens um, Academy class for this year, 2019-2020. Um, I'm just so grateful that our district allows our community to be involved. I wanted to thank our superintendent, too, for giving a great detailed overview about our district of schools, and thank you to the accountability and research team, research team for presenting our strategic plan. So it was really awesome. I got to speak at Seven Springs PTO meeting about the importance of parental engagement. It was such, it was so refreshing seeing all these parents and guardians and teachers and staff at that meeting and being actively involved. So I wanted to, um, to thank all of them. I also got to visit Northwest Elementary School, Fox Hollow, Hudson Elementary. Um, and I really wanted to thank um, Mrs. Hilton for um, actively interviewing and working so hard to get Hudson Elementary School an assistant principal. I'm very thankful for that. I know that the staff is too. I got to meet her yesterday, um, and Mrs. Ennis, I think she's just gonna be a wonderful, wonderful addition to their, um, to their school. Um, one of my favorite things that I got to do was attend our fall commencement ceremony um, with Mrs. Armstrong and Mrs. Hilton was there, and of course, Superintendent Browning. Um, it's just always such a happy occasion when we see our students graduate. And they, when they get to tell you, um, there was a, one of the keynote speakers, she was saying how she wants to be a teacher. So it really just, when they tell you what they want to do after, it just 
really warmed, warmed my heart and it just makes me so proud of all of them. Um, I also wanted to thank Dr. Isles um, for spending, uh, it wasn't last Friday, it was two Fridays ago now. <laughs> um, she spent uh, Friday with me and we got to see 5A High School's new um, Fire Science Academy building and Hudson High School's Pharmacist Technician Program and their mock pharmacy. It's really, really cool. Um, and what an amazing opportunity for our students um, to get them uh, college and career ready. So really, really awesome, so thank you. Um, and then I got to attend also the Starkey K school groundbreaking. That was my very first groundbreaking ever, so it was really exciting. And I'm just too, I'm so grateful for the partnership between um, the county and um, the schools. Um, it just, just um, what Mrs. Armstrong had mentioned, it's just gonna be so awesome for our students to be able to go back to school and show their parents the library and you know go to the park and use the gymnasium. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Not to mention those sweet little kindergartners that are going to be the first class. So it was super fun. Um, and then also I attended the master board. Um, and we got to really focus on continuing focusing on communication. So that was it. Your turn. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a couple highlights not covered. Um, uh, in continuing the progress of the program that we're working on, I'm on the committee with um, them for Lacucci Elementary, a program Mrs. Poe has been very involved, very active and involved in getting things moving forward, as has Tom Viking. And now we have uh, been approached by USF that is expressing to do a partnership with us there as well. So I'll just keep giving you the little tidbits until we come up with the final. And of course, uh, Lacucci River Electric Co-op is providing a very significant sum of recurring money each year to help us with this. Okay, uh, groundbreaking the Starkey K-8. Yes, I was there too. The innovation that is going to be coming out of the school and the supporting of our pathways um, for all of our kiddos is, is absolutely amazing. I'm proud of the good stewardship we're showing to our taxpayers and the black box theater. I can't wait to see. Mm -hmm. So um, tomorrow I'm attending a 9-11 ceremony, which probably some of you all are oh, too, at Gulf High School. Also attended the master board training with my feller, my, my feller, with my fellow board members and superintendent. <laughs> I don't know what's with me today. And um, out of that training, I'm going to end my little spiel here with a quote that I thought is uh, positive. We talked about something called um, emotional. IQ, EQ, I don't know if any of you all yeah, have ever no, studied any of that, but it, it's a measurement of not your you know, brainiac intelligence Q quotient, but your emotional, your empathy, your how you relate and engage. I see lots of nods, so I don't need to go on. But um, one of the quotes I thought was really good and apropos for right now that in negotiating for the pr purpose of reaching an agreement, the most effective strategy is known as a win-win. It's the emotionally intelligent approach to negotiation and conflict, and I'm really hoping for a win-win to come for all of us. All right, thank you. That's all I have to say. And uh, now we are on to, oh, the attorney. He's been awfully Paul quiet. Yeah, There's not one thing. Nothing? nothing one. Come on. Nothing? nothing. Okay. All right then. Uh, now, anybody else had any new business they thought of? Okay. So we are on to public comment with the pink cards. And I am going to.